Hey there, I'm Jesse, and you're listening to the Deep Lore Boys podcast, where me, Matthew, and Jackson delve into the random, rare, and often ridiculous pieces of human history. About 60 crinkle-faced little men laughing and giggling. Yeah, if you smoke weed, it keeps the Gortach away. All right, I, I think it's I think it's time, Matthew. I think is you it, need to tell no, me. Yeah, is, you need to. This is like barf bag. I do just want to say right now that I have had that several times. And I've never gotten sick. <laughs> You're disgusting. The Wallet and Park gnome incident. Okay, uh... Wallet and Park in England. Uh, it's where Wayne Manor was filmed in the Dark Knight movies. Uh, a little hey. known fact about it. Wait, for real? In the Dark Knight movies? That's that's Wallet and Park. This is Wallet and Park. Uh, across the grounds of this park, this is like a big, you know, public area in this estate, I guess, where people would come through all the time and they would hang out at the park and do, you know, the things that we do at parks, have picnics and stuff like that. Just classic good old times. Uh, but there is one section that we only know as the swamps. It's just what people called it. Uh, a little closed off section. Uh, there was a chain linked fence around it that nobody was allowed to go into. You were supposed to just kind of stay out of there. And nobody really wanted to go into there. It was a nasty swamp. It was dark. It was creepy. Everybody stayed out of there. Uh, until 1979, a group of kids cross into, they cross over a fence into the um, forbidden swamp. Into the forbidden Park. swamp. Uh, uh, <laughs> and they encounter none other than a group of gnomes. Uh, they reported, what, like several dozens of them? And then the gnomes, the gnomes all got into cars, into little gnome cars. What? Uh, these cars, they were like punch buggies. They were little gnome punch buggies. There were about 30 of them all driving around, chasing the kids around the swamps. <laughs> uh, and the kids began to panic and freak out as they got driven down by gnomes and punch buggies. As they <laughs> in the, at them in and the chased forbidden them away. swamp. Yes. And um, the kids climbed back over the fence and ran away. And as they did, they saw the gnomes peering back through laughing at them. Uh, <laughs> that is what, what we know about the gnome incident. Oh, that's just weird. So a a like biker gang of gnomes basically comes zooming out of the swamp. Why would you be driving in a swamp? These must be some really awesome punch buggies. I yeah, I don't know how they drove these punch buggies through the swamp. Maybe they were like sticking to the drier parts or like driving across tree branches and stuff. I don't know. Well, what I was but, more wondering was who would make punch buggies maybe. specifically designed for gnomes? The gnomes would, obviously. Well, like, okay, so then the gnomes had to have been experts on machinery. Gnomes built their bubble like, cars, dude. Out of what? Like, in what factory? The gnome factory, of course. I guess. We can, actually, I can read straight from the news article that was published at the time. Little people yes. and tall stories? Yes. Are this is talking about, when it says little people, is it talking about the gnomes or the kids? Maybe both. Maybe both. They're all little. Well, uh, four children claim they were chased from a park by a gang of gnomes. About 60 crinkle-faced little men laughing and giggling. They told their headmaster, Mr. Robin Aldridge of Southwood, Southwold Primary School, and after questioning them closely, he said last night, all their stories tallied. I know it sounds far-fetched, but they really believe in what they saw. The children, Andrew Pierce, 10, and his sister, Rosie, 8, Angela Elliott, 10, and Patrick Olive, 9. Yeah, uh, that's their ages, by the way. I thought it was just like their societal Those rank. Are, their rank, their social credit score. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, it was looking pretty low. So all of the children corroborated each other on this tale. Yeah, they all told the same story. And most of them, when you compare all the evidence, most of the kids' stories all line up. Like all the details add up and match. Except for one of the kids just like totally screws up the details. And like, I think most of them say that the gnomes had white hair, but one of the kids randomly says that they had black hair. But hmm. apart maybe from that maybe there kid, was some diversity. You know, one or two of the gnomes had black hair. Yeah, most had white. Was. I mean, if you're running away from a bunch of laughing gnomes driving little punch buggies, are you really going to notice what color their hair is? Yeah, like I don't think they're really going to notice too much. But apparently, they ran around the park for 15 minutes being chased by gnomes. Wait, just uh, in the swamp? In the swamps. The children said that there were about 30 cars in all with two gnomes in each car. So they were they were double teaming it. They had one guy in the gunner seat, one guy <laughs> driving. Uh, the <laughs> cars made no motor noise, but had a button bell instead of a horn. They had triangulish Whoa. lights 
and the gnomes leaned to steer them. A child said that they had no steering wheels, but just a round thing that turned with a handle on it. And the cars could jump over logs. So these were not your conventional human automobiles. This was of gnomish design. I wonder, like, a lot of these kids are probably still alive if this happened in, like, the 70s. Like They could be, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if any of them still have anything to say about it. They're mm. going to have to come clean. Could we get them on the podcast? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get one of them on, interview them. Tell us about the traumatic moment when the gnomes first appeared zipping over the logs, coming at you guys with their goofy little smiles. <laughs> yeah, what did you do when the gnomes approached? Do you think did they you fought run? back? What do you do? There were 30 cars, 60 gnomes with 30 <laughs> Actually, cars. Yeah. Well, it's an that's estimated number. The children didn't about, kill yeah. them. That's a lot. Like, Still, dude, yeah, that's a lot of gnomes, man. That, I'd be outnumbered. Yeah, that is dangerous. Like, Beware. And who knows what other kinds of technology they had if they had these yeah, they had wacky cars, swamp they, cars. They could have had guns. They could have had, like, atomic bombs even. <laughs> they, Can you imagine they, they launch out from the logs and then just start swinging <laughs> up these big, like, flintlock guns? nuclear warheads. And, like a Davy Crockett. Yes. In order to have cars, they would have to have some sort of, like, technology, like, access to, like, mines where they could mine the metal that would be in the cars, which I guess... They Maybe were the cars the were given to them. We don't know. I mean, Walleton Hall and, like, you know, everything this park is known for, they cover it up pretty closely. So who's to say that somebody there didn't build them these cars? On the Wikipedia for Walleton Park, I got to point out, there is zero mention of the gnomes, as far as I can tell. They have covered it up. Oh, yeah. No, they don't talk about the gnomes in Walleton Park. That's not that is not what Walleton is Park is. Is it like a taboo subject? For. I don't know if it's really taboo. I know other people since this incident have reported seeing gnomes and fairies and stuff in the park, but the general consensus is just that that's probably just them saying that. None of those right. stories are really taken very seriously. I mean, do you really want a gnome incident like that on your park advertisement? Like, there you just get a bunch of like people who believe in fairies digging. Who's gonna park. believe them? Who's gonna believe them? Really? True. Like, who's gonna believe a bunch of kids who say they saw some gnomes in the park? Like, well, newsflash: we believe it. We believe them. I mean, we know that the headmaster of their school insists that they, you know, whether or not the incident was real, he can't say for certain. But the kids clearly saw something. And yeah, apparently these it. kids, it would be very unlike them to just lie about stuff. I mean, he claims so. I wasn't a kid that would oftentimes lie. But when I did, I came up with crap like this. Like you not went and told happen, your but... mom that you got attacked by 60 gnomes. Yes. Yeah, I, I could have said I that. I mean, hey. Well, the story is also embarrassing. Like if I was going to make something up, it'd be like I beat up the gnomes or something. Not like they laughed at us and chased us around in punch buggy yeah you know uh 30 cars uh each armed with two gnomes jumped out of the bushes while the others got away i grabbed the nearest club and i fought off like at least maybe like 57 of them they were crying like little babies i picked up one car and threw it at another yeah Uh, then it exploded yeah (laughs) full black adam mode i just (laughs) It's in England, so they would probably tell stories like, I escaped the dentist for the 15th time. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I haven't had braces, or have I ever brushed my teeth? Actually, that gives me an idea. What if cryptid sightings and and gnome incidents like this are really just like serial commercials, but the people run away before the commercial can happen? Like the Gorilla Glue commercial where somebody breaks something and they're like, oh, I need better glue, and then a gorilla shows up. Yeah, what would happen if, you know, Gorilla showed up and they just ran away and told all their friends it was Sasquatch? Maybe that's Dude, what's happening. Maybe that's what this is. This is like a commercial. Maybe the gnomes were just about to advertise some cereal. Why is cereal specifically cereal? It'd be because that's were... what would happen. A bunch of gnomes <laughs> pop out in their cars and they drive around and say like, oh, you need some wallet and charms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, but the kids just got <laughs> terrified and ran away. Dude. If that's the case, I would love to see the footage of that. I would love to see a commercial where a bunch of kids just get scared and run off halfway through and they just never come back. It's like, because in all the commercials, like if you're applying that to like Lucky Charms or something, like they're always with the mascots and like having fun and like, oh yeah, the cereal good. If the kids are just running away in terror, is that right? Like, dude, (laughs) screaming and that's even better. I love that. Have you ever uh, 
thought that a quarter pounder burger was not enough and you needed the one third pounder burger. <laughs> uh, you ever you ever think of that? Well, let me tell you something here. A and W thought that. Of course they did. So they released the third pounder burger. And it quickly it swept over the market. What? It <laughs> you would expect a third pounder <laughs> burger to just, you know, completely destroy the quarter pounder here in America because you know Americans they need extinct. all the food they can get. But no, no, it failed. And A and W, they wondered, they thought, why? Why would somebody not want a third pounder burger? So they interviewed them. They ran a massive survey and they found out that most of the American population thought that a third of a pound is less food than oh, a quarter no. of a pound. They thought a third no. was smaller than a quarter. And so they did. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. It's terrible. That is actually quite funny. This is actually not the only time that a burger has flopped at a restaurant where they try to unveil a new idea and then it just doesn't work. Please, don't oh, I'm sure. The, the other burger. Should we should we discuss this burger. one? What burger. one is it? What are you talking about? The Burger King. Fucking the. All right, I I think it's I think it's time, Matthew. I think is you it? need to tell no, me. Yeah, you is, need to. This is like barf bag. This isn't even a topic. This is not even something to actually talk. So about. back in 2015. <laughs> Burger King decided to release a spooky burger. The patty was still normal. Everything in the burger was normal, but the bun was jet black with sesame seeds on top. Well, apparently this burger turned people's poop bright green the next morning. Oh, and yes. Everybody had this experience. Bright green, so not black? We get like a lime green and apparently it burned really bad. <laughs> I found this. I found this tweet from Venom Owl uh, in 2015. <laughs> he said, "So just had the spookiest poo ever, thanks to Burger King's Halloween Whopper. <laughs> the black bun turned mine aqua green slash blue." This guy says, "Don't really care how it tastes. I just want that Halloween burger from at Burger King for the red green poop." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, I wonder if you could like find the dye that they dyed it with and just like drink, the just dye. drink it. <laughs> <laughs> just contaminate everything inside Dude. you. Oh, oh, wait! Burger King's ghost pepper Whopper causes explosive diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I went out, if I went you went out to lunch with a coworker the other day and he got one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, dude. I was just in the middle of saying you're stupid enough to get a ghost pepper whopper. You earned that. <laughs> yeah. Said, yeah, my coworker got one. Like, <laughs> what do you think is gonna happen, man? Like, isn't it like orange? Oh yeah, it's, it's like, like a, it's bright, like bright orange. Like, bun. dude, <laughs> that <laughs> looks like diarrhea. No, there's this one Chinese buffet that we go to in Warsaw that's like really run down and sketchy and. They have this chicken. It's like this spicy chicken on a stick, and it is just a bright, like, fire engine red. And oh, every time no. people get it, and they're like, mmm, the chicken's so good. And they have, like, violent <laughs> diarrhea. Like, I do just want to say right now that I have had that several times, and I've never gotten sick. Of that. You're disgusting. <laughs> Dude, that means you could probably survive the uh, ghost pepper whopper. Dude, you think you could actually give it a ghost try? Pepper whopper. <laughs> I will not take chances. Dude, you want a bet? <laughs> I really like the idea of trying these various foods, not for the like react content of let me see if I can get through it, but just for the next day. Like, dude, how is that? How is that number two? We should definitely, because this is history related, bring up how Putin blames the Anglo Saxons for blowing up a <laughs> he pipeline. Did. He that, blew up an oil but pipeline. Not today. Wait, what? Did Shit, you hear didn't. about that? No, I yeah. didn't. What's the so story? So they blew up an oil pipeline. It was a, the Russians. There was no. Yeah, the Russians blew up their own <laughs> oil pipeline. There was no oil coming through it, and so they blew it up to basically say 
that yeah we can blow up an oil pipeline basically <laughs> was just what Putin wanted to do he was just like hey guys you think I wouldn't blow up an oil pipeline but I Watch will this. and he just blows up his own oil pipeline <laughs> right. it was already really stupid and of course the rest of the world is like Putin why did you just blow up your pipeline and Putin was, <laughs> then all the Russians all the people living there who were like Putin why did you blow up our pipeline and he's like it wasn't me it was the Anglo-Saxons <laughs> the Anglo-Saxons Dude. did it and so everybody's like, dude, what? So there's just tons of art now. Like people are making absurd amounts of fan art. You know, those like medieval tapestries that you see with like that 2D oh, yeah. looking art. Yeah, it's just pictures of that, of like Anglo-Saxons hitting pipelines with spears <laughs> and like ravaging oil pipelines. That's, like, those dastardly so Anglo-Saxons. Cool, if I had a nickel for every time, I cut one of them in my backyard trying to blow up the oil pipeline. Dude, those darn back at it again, man. Back, back at, at it again, again at Christmas. It's a good Cream. thing our apartment doesn't have <laughs> natural gas because yeah, dude, if they the Anglo- Anglo Saxons would be (laughs) (laughs) They'd be all over it, man. Hungry Grass is a, as far as I can tell, a pretty obscure piece of Irish mythology. I don't know if it's obscure. I just know its wiki article is very small and I've never heard of it before. It's definitely Um, pretty obscure. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Basically, uh, in, in this Irish folklore, sometimes there's some like, cursed grass and if you stand on it you get really hungry that's about it you just you're hungry that's now. really the whole story that's yeah. all it does was the grass cursed before or after someone walked on it was like the grass evil the grass or... was already evil and we'll, well yeah presumably the grass uh, didn't decide to become evil because it was tread upon yeah the grass like, you know wasn't... what i've had enough yeah, you know what <laughs> <laughs> that's the last straw pal all these people think they can walk all over me <laughs> yeah don't tread on me I think the name is kind of misleading because it implies that the grass itself is hungry, but really, yeah, that that's it, not really true. It makes you hungry. Well, the proper Irish word for it is actually like fair gortok, which uh, translates to fairy grass. Do we have like a solid origin story for this? Like, was there a patch of grass in a real Irish village that like people stood on and they felt like they got really hungry? All we know about is that it's either from a corpse. Or a fairy. This man named Steenie Harvey uh, suggests that there is a corpse uh, near the hungry grass that hasn't been buried properly. It's just like a corpse. Uh, And so the hungry grass is now angry because of that and now makes you hungry. Okay, yeah. He suggests that the hungry grass is cursed by the proximity of an uh, an An unshriven unshriven corpse. corpse. Uh, Okay, then there's another guy named William Carleton. He was from a lot longer ago. And... uh, what he says seems to imply is that fairies planted the hungry grass. These fairies must be really mischievous if they're planting this grass. I dare day. say these I fairies dare must, say. Be, must be rather mischievous. The mythology, according to Wikipedia, the mythology of hungry grass uh, has expanded to rural Missouri during the 1800s. A shapeless creature was found to harass the hemp farmers of the countryside, and Irish immigrants to the area called it the, what is this, the Gortach of Missouri. Apparently, uh, it was discovered that hemp farmers who smoked hemp on their veranda every night were exempt from the attack, so they were just kind of like, yeah, if you smoke weed, it keeps the Gortach away. Wait, if you smoke weed... You don't get affected by the hungry grass? That's a really interesting concept for a monster that, like, it's it haunts you, you smoke weed, and it, and it goes you alone. away. And then the, yes. then the monster of addiction haunts you. That's right. The real monster was the addiction Jackson, you made Jackson, along the way. Weed is not addictive. Marijuana is not addictive, I swear, guys. <laughs> I swear, dude. I remember having a friend that I, I knew him for quite a quite a few years. We used to do Bible quizzing together. And the very last conversation I ever had with him was him trying to tell me that, like, well, dude, if you're going to smoke anything, smoke weed, because it's not it's It's not not addictive. (laughs) (laughs) And then he just left and I never saw him again. Such wisdom. Hi again, it's Jesse. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Deep Lore Boys podcast. You can find more episodes of our show on YouTube and Spotify, which we encourage you to share with your friends so we can grow the podcast. And drop a comment down below if you're feeling extra generous. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope your day is nothing short of interesting. Take care. I'm going to go post that one on Twitter.com.